morning, New Horizon. Once again, welcome to our Sunday morning broadcast, and we are excited and enthused and glad that you are able to tune in. We pray that you have had a very blessed week on last week, and if not, just look at it this way. God is still giving you breath in your body, so you got another chance to stay focused on him that he might continue to bless and keep all of us. Just a few housekeeping things I need to make sure we understand. Those of you who are aware, you're watching the news and our numbers are still going up. It is extremely important that we do those things that are necessary, and that is social distancing and wearing our mask. And I'm aware that there are some people that just refuse to do that, okay? Uh, this is not a time to focus on your personal ideas and rights. It's the time to think about the fact that you can, um, you're affecting someone else, and you want to be kind to others. You know, there are some of you whose bodies are maybe a little bit stronger than others, and then you're walking around in the presence of people who have weak immune systems. So it is extremely important that we stop being selfish and think about others as well. So I'm encouraging all of you to make sure you social distance yourselves. I know it's going to be rough. Thanksgiving is coming up, but we've just got to do what we know is the right thing to do. Also remind you that if there are any needs that might arise, uh, feel free to call the church. Our number is 423 622 and if no one answers the phone, just leave a message. But don't hang up, because then you hang up, and then uh, you want to grumble and complain. But if you leave a message, uh, just keep in mind, we'll get back in touch with you or call those deacons that have been assigned, and you, some of you may have their phone numbers. So please, ma'am, and please, sirs, let us follow proper guidelines. And also thanks to those of you who are still yet continuously giving and all of the various areas and ways in which you can do that. Let me remind you that even here at the church, um, you have an opportunity to drop off your tithes and your offerings uh, like on today, Sunday, from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. And during the week, you may do so from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. But also... You may use the, uh, our app, our Giblify app, whatever uh, you choose to do. Uh, we say thanks um, and continue doing just that uh, because we know that uh, God has strange ways of blessing us even in such a time as this. Also, I want to pause for just a moment and to say thanks to all of you all who... Um, sent out shout-outs to um, me as your young pastor. Thank you so very, very much uh, and just wishing me a very blessed birthday. You know, um, changes how you think because you recognize that you don't have to be here and that's a blessing all by itself. And then to realize God has kept you uh, 24 years or 25 years and in my case uh, <laughs> double that plus but I just I'm, I'm grateful and I want you to know as your pastor that I appreciate that to the utmost also uh, as many of you know uh, there are certain things that we here at New Horizon are accustomed to doing and this time of the year leading up to Thanksgiving and Christmas we want to be mindful once again of those who are less fortunate than we are and are outside. So we are doing our hat and gloves and sock drive uh, to make sure that those who are uh, in the streets and the homeless are able to keep warm. Amen. There are many of us that don't think that way, but there are due to uh, this virus, uh, a whole lot of things have changed. So I'm encouraging you all uh, to just once again um, think of others. So we're going to do our hat and glove and sock drive. And um, one size fits all in all anyway most of the time. So 
just do what you can and you can drop those off at the church based on the same time frame that we deal with our tithes and our offerings on Sundays it will be from 1 to 6 and during the week uh, it, again it will be from 9 to 7 so please ma'am and please sirs let us think about others although you may be in your nice warm home and not think about the fact that there is somebody under the bridge or just walking the street that needs our attention so please ma'am and please sirs let's not wait let's get started on it now and continue to do what we know we have been good at doing in the past get your bible uh, pencil and paper as we get ready now to make preparation and in getting into the word of god now that i know you have those things in place let us read together our prayer of meditation and it simply reads dear lord i come before thee as an empty vessel open my ears that i might hear open my eyes that i might see open my mind that i might understand open my heart that i may receive your word once again we are still dealing with our theme entitled ain't no need to worry uh, our theme is taken out of Paul's writings from Philippians chapter 4. And there are a few things that I do not want us to lose sight of that Paul has already laid out. We have discussed. I'm not going to go over all of the bullets, but I do want to make sure that there are some key things we do not lose sight of. First of all, do not lose sight of the fact that Paul is focusing on uh, the dangers of Christians uh, falling into a state of worry that can lead into depression and to other things. So as a result of that, Paul takes the time and lays out uh, throughout the whole book uh, different mindsets that we as Christians ought to have. And when we arrive at chapter 4 of the book of Philippians, he makes sure that we understand that we are obligated to have what he calls a secure mind. And a secure mind is nothing more than a combination of everything Paul has discussed in chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. So a secure mind is a mind that does not allow uh, circumstances or people or things to get the best of them. And we've already gotten into this chapter and laid out some very key uh, important things that we got to keep in mind. You should have those things down in your notes. Uh, Paul has uh, mainly shared with us the importance of, of right praying. And, and now he's dealing with us about right thinking. And this is where we have been in the last couple of Sundays taken out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. And what I want to do now is read that verse in its entirety, and I will share with you as to what part of the verse we're going to start at on today. Listen to the Apostle Paul um, as he speaks to us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Paul says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. On today, we want to look at the phrase, Whatever things are lovely. Whatever things are lovely. Now I want you to keep in mind that this is the fifth bullet, the fifth thing, the fifth object that the Apostle Paul lays before us that might impact what he considers it to be uh, our right thought. In other words, these are a list of things that Paul says that we should practice on a daily basis here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. And he wants us to keep in mind that this verse is rather unique. And when I say unique, 
What Paul is saying in essence to us is that he is stressing the object of thought rather than the fact of thought. So we, when we get into, as we've been discussing, and we've already dealt with four of those, this is why we're taking the time to dig deep into what each one means so that we can digest uh, what Paul wants us to grasp that will change our thought pattern, how we as Christians should think. And that also helps us to recognize that God is more interested in what his people are thinking. And the reason why that is important is because if your thinking is right, it can help your actions to come out right. But when your thinking is off-centered, it is hard to line up your actions, your character. So the Apostle Paul here in this particular phrase, uses the word lovely. So I need you to write that down in your notes, okay? Now, that word lovely, we've got to dig deep so that we can get the fullness of what Paul is talking to us about. And that happens to be a word that comes from a Greek word, prophile. Now listen, I want to get into what does Paul really mean when he say whatever things are lovely? When, it, when I tell you that it comes from a Greek word, which means prophile, I need to, for you to make sure you understand the in-depthness of what Paul presents before us. That word carries the connotation to mean the following things. First of all, it means agreeable, admirable, and it is talking about the acceptableness, the acceptable and pleasing manner of certain things. The word also implies that the believer should have an attractive and a lovable approach in their attitude and their thinking. It refers to that which is pleasing. That who, to which is pleasing. It refers to the idea that the believer must carry him or herself in such a way that it evokes a response of love. So when Paul mentions this now, note carefully that the idea is that the believer ought to think on that which produces certain things. Okay? And what I'm saying is a believer is obligated and responsible to think about things that produces harmony rather than strife. Now, there are people, uh, let, me, let me take it from this perspective. Hellish people are hellish because they think hellishly. Okay? What Paul is saying, we got to change how we think in order to change our character, our behavior, because it produces the right things that are lovely, causes a person to produce or focus on things that are directed toward harmony. Okay? You ever just been around a person who, who you almost want to ask them, what side of the bed did they wake up on? Because every time you see them, it, the, the, their image, their, their behavior, their character is of such. So the, the fundamental meaning that Paul actually presents before us is that which calls forth love. And if you were listening attentively or had tuned in, show you how the Holy Spirit works. Brother Shelley focused on, on a lot of this a whole lot of this. And, and this is why it's so important that we as Christians don't take it for granted and get lazy. Because when you tune in through life application and now you're dealing with morning worship, that's what the word ought to do. The word is a giant puzzle. Okay? And everything ought to fit. Now, let's go back to what Paul says. Whatever things are what? Lovely. Now, 
Webster's American Family Dictionary describes the word lovely like this. It says, having a beauty, okay? Having a beauty that what appeals to the heart and mind as well as the eye. I want to talk about that for a minute. Having a beauty that appeals to the heart and mind as well as the eye. That means that if you are really operating and walking based on the spirit of that which is lovely, it is impossible not to be seen. It is impossible not to be recognized. See, the loveliest thought that comes to mind about uh, living a virtue-centered life is based on what Paul presents to us in Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. When you lock all of that in together, when Paul says, whatever things are lovely, it is that of God's peace being with us. See, you cannot operate in the peace of God and have a hellish mentality or a troubled or confused mentality. You got to understand peace is not going to follow a hell raiser. Plain and simple. Peace will not follow a hell raiser. So let's take a moment attached to the concept of what Paul is trying to teach us and look at this word peace. The word peace, uh, once again, is also a unique word that it has derived from a Greek concept that I need to bring what it actually means. It focuses on tranquility, harmony, safety, as well as prosperity. And when you look at it from all of those angles, you can recognize now the direction in which the Apostle Paul is trying to cause us to look at and to focus on. All of us want to live a, 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 a trouble-free life. Nobody just wakes up in the morning and desires and want hell to break loose. The problem, however, is this. And this is the part that I want to stick in our spirits and in our thoughts. It is more difficult to maintain peace and live from it on the basis if your body is not well or you have a mind that is troubled. Now, here's what I'm trying to get you to understand. It's tough when you're sick and you're trying to operate from that spirit of sickness to think of things that are lovely. It is hard when you are dealing with your mind becoming troubled and now all of a sudden somebody comes up and says, whatever things are lovely. That is a tough challenge, okay? But it must be done. It must be done, okay? And there are times that God will not take you out of the trouble. There are times that the trouble does not disappear. I don't care how much you have prayed, you can pray and pray and pray and pray, and it looks and sounds as if God does not hear you. So that tells us that we must recognize that what Paul is saying brings about a challenge, okay? Whatever things are lovely are present, but there are moments that we have an obligation or responsibility. So I want you to listen to this. If... Notice what I said. I said, if, if everything around you is in turmoil, it is difficult to concentrate on enjoying inner peace. Now, it, it bothers me when you're around people who are pseudo holy. And their approach is, all you got to do, wait just a minute. It is not as simple as it sounds. Sometimes that becomes a double whammy because we hang around people who remain in that negative realm of thinking. So sometimes you have to step 
away from certain people in order that your mind can focus on things that are lovely. Because you have to understand what scripture teaches. That power rests on the tongue when it comes to life or death. So if you're around a person that does nothing but talk negative, that statement, that's why I say if everything around you is in turmoil, it is difficult to concentrate on inner peace. Okay? But Paul wants us to understand when we dig deep and look at that word lovely. The word lovely is a descriptive word, okay, because of its relationship dealing with how we value things or that to which we give attention to, okay? In other words, we got to watch as, as believers how Paul lays out what he lays out for us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. He's trying to get us to understand you got to be careful of those things you value or don't value. So when we love something or when we love someone, we often describe that person or that thing as being lovely. Okay? All of us have done that. We're all guilty of that. But you cannot love something and not value or give attention to it. Now, that's where we get confused at, okay? In other words, a person cannot love a child without giving that child attention. It's, it, you, you can't separate the two. How are you going to tell me that we love God and we give God no attention? See, it just becomes something to say and something that sounds good. But Paul says, whatever things are what? Lovely. So we recognize now that this idea of things that are lovely has to do with the things I value. And if I don't value my relationship with God, then it's going to be hard for me to recognize his presence and declare he's lovely when I'm in a storm. See, so let's watch those things that we actually value. Now, let's take a moment and let's consider this virtue called lovely. In other words, let's look at it from the perspective of God's love and values us as his children how, how if if i can hold on to how god values me it ought to affect how i value god and others around me okay now let's walk through a couple of things first of all god values his time with us and his attentiveness to us what well, what would you feel like what would it be like if you prayed and you were in your bedroom and God either taps you on the shoulder or whispers and tells you, stop right there, I'm busy, I'm tired up, I'll holler at you later. Just think about it. Think about it for a moment. What if God did just that? That is not the case at all. What we find out, how many times have we fallen short and thought that God would not hear nor answer our prayer, and yet he steps right in? That's because God values his time with us and his attentiveness. Not only that, he has given his angels charge over us to keep us from harm. Now that's, that's good news all by itself. Okay? This is how much God uh, focuses and values us as his. Let me take you to what the psalmist tells us in Psalm 91 verses 11 and 12. The psalmist says, For he shall give his angels 
charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now I want to back up. I want to back up. And I want you to look once again at verse 11. He says, for he shall give his angels charge over you. See, this is how the enemy chooses to keep us from getting connected in our thinking about things that are lovely. One of the worst things a a believer can do is withdraw themselves and uh, lock themselves up in the room. And allow a problem or a situation to dominate them. No matter how tough times get. Listen to what that scripture says. For he shall give his angels charge over you. That means no matter what. Cuz, best friend, next door neighbor, uh, buddy been buddy for years. Might skip city on you. Have you ever thought about how God let his angels watch over us? That's how he values us. So if he's going to let loose his angels to watch over me, and notice what that psalmist said, to keep you in all your ways. Now let me play with your mind for a moment. When he says in all your ways, that's even when we do wrong. When we do stupid stuff and end up Falling short, guess what? His angels are watching over us. How many of us have gone back and done things that we said we weren't going to do no more? And don't y'all get quiet on me. Okay? Going back to the club, going back to the streets, uh, did, did, uh, had, had something to drink and got high, got drunk. All those things. And yet, even in the midst of doing wrong, he still kept me. How can I prove it? Because I'm still here. Okay? So we recognize that until we value the things in relation to how God values us as his, we're not going to be able to grasp what Paul is teaching us about whatever things are lovely. God values us so much that he gives us new mercies every morning. Boy, y'all got to see this. Every morning. Let me help you out. Let's go to Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Once again, I need to back up. I got to show you something. They are new what? Every morning. New when? Every morning. New when? Every Now, you got to see this. That means that God has got to have so much, so much mercy that every morning he grants me not, not last week's mercy, not yesterday's mercy, but every morning that we wake up, he grants us new mercy. And then he says, great is your faithfulness. So all I'm trying to show us is that our value system from God's perspective on how he values us all the impact how we operate based on Paul saying whatever things are lovely. Not only that, he gives us freely rich benefits that fulfill our lives every single day. So he doesn't just throw out new mercies. I got some benefits that comes along, and I'm going somewhere for us to understand how we ought to operate on focusing on 
whatever things are lovely. Listen to the psalmist in Psalm 103, verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul. See, you got to be so careful. And this is what the enemy wants. We pray and we don't always get what we pray for. And instantly, some of us slip into a state of depression. And we walk around all sad. There are moments you got to realize that you cannot forget what God did last week. You can't forget what God did yesterday. Although you praying for something to take place now. Don't lose sight of that. Because there are moments that you got to recognize the benefits that God lays out before us. So we are freely, he, he freely gives us these rich, off-the-chain benefits. In fact, God demonstrates his love toward us by making sure, when you look at all this, he makes, we got to make sure, because God, God is doing his part, God makes sure that his goodness and his mercy follows us. His goodness and his mercy follows us. His goodness and his mercy follows us. Let me prove it. Psalm 23, verse 6. The psalmist says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, not just on Mondays, not just in the middle of the week, not just on the weekend, all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, all of what I'm sharing with us teaches us how God values us. In fact, God demonstrates his love toward us by making sure that both his goodness and his mercy daily, even when we mess up, even when we are not where we ought to be, you can be assured that his goodness and his mercy. Have you ever thought about how close you come to just messing up? And yet, goodness pops up, mercy shows up. So God, God has carefully invested his time, his love, and attention in us. And we have the full assurance the full assurance of this when you read scripture. Let me take you somewhere. This is why I want to plant this seed in here so you can make sure you understand when we pull apart this idea of whatever things are lovely, we can get it. In Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, listen to the writer. Let your conduct be without covetedness. Be content well, what such things as you have? For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Now, let's stop right there. Satan's mission is to flip that which is lovely Upside down. He doesn't want you to see and operate on the things that are lovely. He don't want you to think about that. There are moments that you got to be careful as a Christian, focusing on something you want so badly. But sometimes you got to reach back and have the attitude. If he brought me through the hell I did, the storm, the situation last time, he can bring me through what I'm dealing with right now. And that's how you can arrive at what Paul, because things that are lovely don't always pop up, okay? Things that are lovely, and that's why I want us to understand. That's why I started out trying to get us to grasp the idea that when you have, when you're sick, and, and, and please understand, if you've never been in these situations and been a diabetic for 20 years, but when people sometimes, you know, or you just, just pray about, hold it. You don't understand now. There are other things that, that are involved in this process, okay? And sometimes you don't necessarily hurt. You just feel like you're out of gas, okay? Sometimes you, you just 
feel like, okay, I'm here. But I have to deal with not allowing how I feel to dominate my thinking. So I have to sometimes sit and, and, and get by myself and get happy all by myself. Because the attitude is you have to say, still here. And God has been a good God. God has brought me through so much. Okay, so considering what God does in valuing us as his children, how should we treat one another? That's when, when Paul says, whatever things are lovely, it is hard to find that which is lovely in the presence of a hell raiser, in the presence of a person that you know is digging ditches or doing that which they desire for you to stumble and to fall. I want to share something with you. It was told once about a little girl dealing with prayer. And the little girl once prayed this statement in her prayer. And I want you to listen to it. She prayed, Lord, make all bad people good and all the good people nice. I, I, I want you to get that now, okay? It would be a wonderful thing if this prayer was answered. That would be off the chain. Now listen to what the statement says in essence. She, you know the bad folk because the bad folk stand the chance to turn what? Good. But the problem is we as good people have a tendency to park there and don't see the need to recognize that you can walk around as a Christian with a nasty attitude, okay? Because you become a reflection of who you are representing in your daily walk. So from a practical perspective, and notice what I said, practical perspective. This idea of lovely speaks of being nice and kind. And Christians can be some of the most hellish. It's, it's sad when you got to ask a person, do they know the Lord? Because the test of, of you operating based on whatever things are lovely is how you act, how you carry yourself under pressure. And as a pastor... I have to be very mindful of that. 24-7, no matter how rude people are, you want to explode. There are moments you just want to step back and say, let me tell you something. I mean, that's just, that's just natural. And we have a tendency, uh, in fact, since, since the, the, the uh, virus has been out, uh, I don't go in restaurants. I, I, go deal with, I deal in two areas I don't like. That is... I don't like drive-thrus. I just, that just never liked them. But now, guess what? I'm in the drive-thru. Okay? 24-7, I'm there. Or I have my wife, and we call the restaurant, and I go and pick it up. And it never failed. Just happened this morning. Just happened this morning. That, that in the midst of, of trying to order coffee and, and all of that, you look in the bag. And they didn't complete the order. And, and you want, and then you look around, and, and that was a time you could whip around the building and be right back. Now the, the line, as long as all get up, well, that changes your way of thinking. And you, gotta, you got to start speaking to yourself and saying, now hold it. I can't show my ignorance because I'm missing my cream and sugar in the bag. I mean, it's simple, and, and you want to do that. You want to say, now, I don't know what that person was doing, but that just don't make no sense. The point is, it's not about what the person was doing, okay? The point is this. What you are as a Christian or when you are alone with a person who has the lowest station in life <laughs> is what you actually are. So here's my point. Let me break it down like this. The real you is the you that'll pop out. 
That's the point. See, it's what you do under pressure. It's how you carry yourself. It's what you do when you're around people that you have figured are lower than what you are. Got to be careful with that. Okay? So we as Christians are not one thing to some people and another to others. You got to be the same across the board. So when Paul says, whatever things are lovely, don't you turn that which could be lovely into a hellish situation by losing your what? Cool. Stepping out, doing that which really you didn't have to do. Okay? L let me help you out with this. L l listen, listen to this. A Christian should not be sour, crabbed, or, in or, or what? Irritable in what? Temperament, this injures the cause of Christ in your life. You, we got to watch. I can't show that which is lovely if my mind is foolish. And this, this is everyday stuff. This, 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 it, all I'm trying to get you to understand is the days that you want to show for the best of you that hell breaks loose. Okay? And you, you get... You just get totally simple, driving. And you see the light is green. But you got a funeral driver in front of you. And you're trying to get somewhere, and, and they are a mile away from the light, creeping. Well, by the time you get up there, not only do they stop, you got to stop. And you're like, now they could have made that. I know that's me. I know how I operate, okay? So I have to get a grip of certain things. There are things that I cannot afford to let go down in my life, okay? So when the Apostle Paul says whatever things are lovely, it has a lot to do with how I see how the Lord values me so that I can then value situations in my own life. I can't have that attitude that y'all just don't know what happened. Wait, 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 wait. Okay? Now, I want to move us into a, a different category of, of talking about being more descriptive of this issue of whatever things are lovely. And what we want to do is, is focus on Paul's writings in the book of Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 13 and 14. I want you to write those down because what we want to do is look at those things and pull that which Paul shares with us that we are obligated. First, uh, once we get into the text, Paul's going to identify who we are, but he's going to give us a responsibility. And you can't operate on things that are lovely if you don't see that you have an obligation to put on certain things. And that's what we got to take our time and walk through. But since I'm out of time, I need you to stay focused on, put that down in your notes. We're going to look at, okay, what Paul wants us to do when it comes to Colossians chapter 3, verses 12, 13, and 14. I'm going to lay it out. and We're going to talk about who we are and what we got to do. And connect all of this to our responsibility in our thinking when Paul says whatever things are lovely. Okay? Because when you are not properly dressed, when you don't do those things that are necessary, it impacts you can't think on things that are lovely. Not when you don't know how to ride out certain things and let certain things just, just let it go. That Satan wants you to hold on to those things, okay? So we're going to look at that. That would be a good spot uh, for us to kick off. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's put it in your notes. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 down to 15. We're going to look at all of that, okay? May God bless you. May God keep you. Uh, I, I thank God for your presence. And, and let, us, let us get into the word. What's more important 
as if we're going to become a better people, we can't let what is happening around us control our relationship with the Lord. In fact, the more COVID rise, the deeper we all get in the word. Amen? Amen. Let us read now our dismissal. Dear Lord, now that we have heard your word, help us to become doers of the word by loving others, caring for the needy, and sharing the gospel. May God bless you.